Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Las Perlitas, Wash Processed Colombia from September Coffee Company. And there's the bag right there. And September, based out of Ottawa, Ontario. And there are coffee roasters that's appeared on this channel on multiple occasions, including our most recent American and Canadian coffee roaster tier list, where we place them in our amazing category, as they're one of our favorite coffee roasters in the entire world. So it'll come as no surprise that we've been monitoring their releases for quite a while now, and they released a coffee that definitely caught our interest that we'll be discussing over the next couple of weeks. A little bit of a hint, it is a coffee that we've reviewed from a number of other coffee roasters as well. But while making that purchase, I decided to add some coffees onto it as well. So I did reach out to Kyle of September asking for some suggestions, and this is one of the coffees that he did suggest to us. So we will see how this one turned out, as this right here is day 38. And recipe we went with for this coffee was pushing it a little bit at a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 99 degrees Celsius, about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And interestingly enough, I actually like this one best through the Chemex, which indicates a more medium grind roast profile for this coffee. So as we've alluded to in previous September reviews, they do roast on the lighter side of things relative to a lot of other Canadian coffee roasters, as this one right here definitely came out a fair bit lighter. I don't want to say necessarily than I expected because we did have some light expectations for them, but I think just in general, the coffees that we reviewed from them continue to come out on the lighter side of that spectrum. So I feel like it's pretty safe to just say, this is a pretty light coffee by most standards and metrics. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 14, first impression, and we did opt for the V60, and the cup was interestingly, surprisingly more intense than initially expected with a very high level of sweetness. That was one of the things that maybe I wasn't necessarily expecting from this coffee. It is a pink per bone. I was possibly expecting maybe a little bit more brightness, maybe a little bit more of a citric forward profile to it, but instead there was a notable berry aspect that was one of the more defining characteristics of it, with plenty of the citric attributes also present. In addition to that, the limeade felt very apt as there was also a nice candied sweetness throughout. The only drawbacks I had from this first impression was that there was an ever so slight grainy quality in the finish and a little bit strong on the citrus, but other than that, it was a good start regardless. Day 17 through the Chemex, and the cup was a little bit more heavy through this brew method as I was offering significantly more of the berry intensity in a near natural level, as at times I could say that this one didn't necessarily feel truly like a wash processed Colombian coffee given just how intense it was. In addition to that, darker berry aspects dominated this cup with plenty of complementary sweeter citric attributes as well, so a little bit of a mixed bag on this second try. We continue on to day 20 as we opted for the April Brewer, and the cup continues to offer a near natural Colombian level of fermentiness, as I don't want to necessarily say it had that natural Colombia like fermentiness to it, but it got somewhat close at times where I said it tastes very similar to that, at least in terms of the berry component, as it's not necessarily an overly heavy coffee. It continues to remain on the cleaner side of things, but this is going to be a little bit of a theme from some of the wash processed Colombian coffees that we're going to be discussing here in the near future in general. It just has that same sort of taste that the natural processed Colombian coffees have with the berry attribute to them. There is plenty of contrasting citrus as well with that subtle grain quality yet again. So this was my least favorite day of the coffee. But we're going to continue on to day 23 as we opted for the V60 with some higher temperatures and a more fine grind. And I felt like it broke through the heaviness with a surprisingly strong and cleaner fruit component to it. There is a level of freshness to the fruits as well that's skewed more in the sweeter citric side of things. More of the strong berries as it's notably improved and I'm not entirely sure how to make anything of this cup, but it's gonna become even more interesting as we go forward as on day 26, we opted for the Chemex with the same adjustments. And it's surprisingly the best it's been to this point as it's really helped tone down a fair bit of the intensive berry aspects to the cup. A cleaner base was allowing for more of a focus on the sweeter fruit aspects of it, sweeter citrus and a little bit more of the fresh fruits in general. So a nice improvement to this coffee, which isn't necessarily something I was expecting. Usually when we're having some struggles with clarity in terms of some fermentiness, the Chemex usually doesn't necessarily help fix that, but in this case it certainly did as we continue on to day 29. 
back to the V60 with our standard recipe and I found that I was going to stick with the V60 correction with the Chemex going forward based off this cup as it's feeling slightly heavy again, not necessarily overly clean for a wash processed coffee as the heavier berry aspects really seemed to dominate this cup with a lingering citric finish. So this one was just okay. And on day 32, we went back to the Chemex with our previous recipe. And once again, it was back to the best it had been by quite a bit with some more clarity as it skews in the berry sense, but the berries felt a little bit more clean, kind of dialing back a little bit of the earlier fermenty aspects we'd experienced, as well as the graining quality. Both of those things seemed to dissipate as we were getting a significantly cleaner cup. It has a long lasting intensity to it, but it focuses much more on the citric as well as berry components to it in a cleaner sense. Day 35, final notes we have, one more try through the Chemex, and it continues to defy logic by not reaching the overberry sense, as it's sweet and pronounced for a wash processed coffee, but still clean. So everything I'm looking for from something like this. Strong berries, again, with that classic Colombian feel. So again, that's possibly trending or leaning towards that fermenty Colombian berry feel, but not necessarily there, as it still continues to remain on the cleaner side of things. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. we have quite a few level fours, so let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the cleanliness level four. So towards the end, I do have to say that this one definitely reached that level four mark, though there were times, especially when we were struggling with this one ever so slightly, that I was considering a level three, given that the heaviness of those berries was just so pronounced that at times it felt like it was taking away from the overall clarity of this coffee. But towards the end, I said, you know, it seems to break through that. The adjustments seem to work for whatever reason, as I still feel like it defied logic a little bit, but nonetheless, towards the end, it was on the cleaner side of things, especially given some of the other impressions we'd had of this coffee. I feel like a four is fair, maybe lower side of the four, a four nonetheless. Continue on to the finish level four, and I guess not all fours are created equal, as this one did have a bit of a lingering, lasting finish to it as well much more in that kind of berry as well as citric scents. And those are the two themes that I continue to focus on, mostly because they're the themes that dominate this cup the most throughout. And for that reason, I said the finish, it's actually on the higher side of the level four, but at no point would I say it's necessarily overbearing. Though there were times, especially through the V60, where it was pushing that ever so slightly, giving that this coffee was just a little bit more intense. Sweetness, level three. So I mentioned on one of the earlier days that there's a candied aspect to it, and I could definitely feel that for the majority of this coffee, though, in general, this coffee was just a little bit more on the sweeter side of things, mostly because it didn't always act like a wash processed coffee. It didn't have as much of that kind of delicacy, that subtlety to it, but rather just a little bit more of a borderline, I want to say honey or natural like intensity to it in general. Not quite as overbearing, not quite as heavy, but at least in terms of the intensity for the sweetness. And for that reason, it definitely justified that level four mark. Continue on to the acidity level four. Another thing that I fully expected going into this one, every part of this coffee scream that it was going to have a fair bit of brightness to it. And it certainly did, especially in terms of the citric tones. This coffee right from the onset did offer that citric component as well as the brightness and both of those things are things that are very much demonstrated within this tasting wheel, though I would not say that either of them were overly dominant as for me. Interestingly, the next thing we're going to discuss, the berry fruit there at that level four, was the most pronounced characteristic for me. And if you'd have told me going into this coffee that it was going to skew in a near natural fermenty sort of berry sense, then I would have said, okay, Probably not my first choice for this coffee as that's my least favorite component that I'm getting in coffees these days is that heavier berry aspect of Colombian coffees. This one right here, given that I was towing that line for the most part, at times I said it's a little too much in that direction, though towards the end being a little bit cleaner, something I enjoyed a little bit more, I said I can live with this. Maybe it's a little too close for comfort. Maybe it's a little bit more intense and heavy than I would specifically like. But nonetheless, I think it was just balanced enough to kind of tow that line and still make it an enjoyable coffee for me. Citrus fruit, level four. So I think they had mentioned something along the lines of a limeade on here. I can fully see that. It's right there in terms of the lime attributes to it. As mentioned, plenty of the brightness definitely present, definitely felt, maybe in a slightly secondary component, maybe a little bit more present in the finish and some of the other aspects of this one, but definitely still a true level four on this coffee. Let's continue on. We have a couple of level threes, the florality level three. And I think while I was making this tasting, I said, you know, the florals might be a little hidden, a little underrated in this coffee, but I can definitely still feel a fair bit of that, a little bit more on the slightly more, I want to say heavier floral components to it. So a little bit more of those kind of red florals present within this coffee. Continue on the caramel level three, and that's the candied aspect of this one, as this one definitely had a little bit of a candied attribute. 
more present in the starting earlier days, but towards the end I could still say when I'm thinking about this, especially when making the tasting wheel, it has enough of that candied sweetness to justify that at a slightly higher level. And then last thing worth discussing is the body at the level three. And this one, even though it was brewed with the Chemex, and obviously this one was made side by side with a couple of other coffees we're going to be discussing from September, had a little bit more texture to it, though going into it, I did expect it to have maybe a little bit more medium bodied aspect to it, given that it is a wash processed Colombian coffee. So level three always felt like a great place that it was going to end up, and it's where it ended up in this tasting wheel. So as I'm looking at it, I think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. Let me start with this. This one was my least favorite of the three coffees from September that we are going to be discussing. That's why it's the first review that we are releasing. But even with that being said, I think it was still an enjoyable cup of coffee. It was, I wanna say, a little bit by a distance my least favorite, but even then towards the end I said, there are some really nice attributes of this coffee, especially with the adjustments we had made with the recipe we figured out for this one. It just seems to offer a little bit more of a cleaner profile to it, and while it's skewing in two specific flavor directions that I don't necessarily enjoy, I'm not the biggest fan of those natural uh, Colombian berry-like components, I should just say Colombian berry-like attributes in general, or the lime-like citric components, neither of those two things are the first two things I'm gonna go for. It did offer enough of a candied sweetness and clarity to at least reach two of the big marks that are present for me. I would say sweetness, clarity, florality, and fruit profiles. The florality, a little bit more delicate, not necessarily, I don't want to say delicate, but maybe not as intense or pronounced as some of the other components in it. And the fruit profiles both skewing in directions that I don't necessarily care for. But outside of that, I think the rest of the coffee was something that I enjoyed. The texture was nice, the brightness was nice, the sweetness was nice, so a lot of really positives to take away from this one, even if it wasn't necessarily my favorite coffee. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to, I feel like if you've always enjoyed the slightly heavier berry attributes of Colombian coffees, but you've always wanted a little bit more clarity and you wanted those toned down ever so slightly, then this is an ideal fit for you because it seems to offer that in a, I want to say, lasting sense. It's not the overbearing, overly dominant attribute of this coffee, though it's the most pronounced and the most intensive part of it. It doesn't skew in that direction where you're like, this is too overbearing, this is too much. You're scoring level five for the finish. You're scoring level five for the sweetness. It just kind of balances that out, tones it down while still keeping a nice bit of clarity. And it still has those kind of pink bone characteristics, of course, a little bit more of that citric brightness to it that's also present throughout the entirety of it. So definitely plenty of positives to take away from this one and the best way I can leave this review. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you enjoyed the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And this right here has been a review of the Las Perlitas Wash Process Columbia from September Coffee Company. Thank you for watching.